In this video, we will have a look at the Azure Firewall. We will have a look at the design concepts of it, where it's best placed, where you would fit it into the network in terms of access control. And we will also have a look at some of its features as well, the features available to the Azure Firewall. So the Azure Firewall is there to enforce access control. And looking at the diagram, we've got an Azure Firewall here. We deploy it into an Azure environment. It goes into a virtual network. The virtual network is like your data center. And then you deploy subnets, which are your different subnets for your different services. The Azure Firewall needs a dedicated subnet, a dedicated firewall subnet of a slash 26 subnet size. And this virtual network has access to the internet. And it's also deployed with an express route, which is the connectivity to the data center over a private network over the ISP backbone. And it's recommended to deploy this Azure firewall in the hub virtual network in a hub and spoke VNet topology like the virtual network here. We have the Azure firewall in this hub VNet where the hub is used for shared services required by all spoke virtual networks. And the spokes are for your specific spoke workloads. And the Hub and Spock VNet topology is a recommendation by Microsoft Azure, by the way. It's a common deployment topology. And what you do is you create some spokes around here and you connect them to the VNet. So if we create some spokes, let's create one here. And let's call it Spoke 1. And then what we do with this, we peer it to the Hub VNet. And then we can create lots of other spokes as well. I can create one just as our example in the diagram. Call it Spoke 2. And all the workloads in Spoke 2 or in Spoke 1, if they wanted to connect out to the internet, they would go through the firewall, the Azure firewall. Or if they wanted to connect to the data center, again, they would go through the hub VNet through the Azure firewall. So the Azure firewall acts as a central enforcement point for all the workloads deployed within the Spoke virtual networks. So don't get confused. These are Spoke virtual networks. They're not subnets. You deploy subnets within the virtual networks and you can see how this works right so you've got one as your firewall you don't need to create many of these as your firewalls for each of these spokes all the spokes utilize this individual one single firewall and it acts as the central enforcement point it's doing central enforcement access control for all your connectivity points connecting into the hub virtual network and you need a firewall anyway because this spoke one cannot speak to spoke two through this vnet without the firewall the firewall as well as access control is ultimately a router as well. It can route traffic between the spoke network. So without the firewall, spot one and spot two cannot speak to each other. And that's another reason why you would need a firewall to enable communication between the different spokes. So that's it as a very basic concept of where you would deploy the firewall. But you might be asking if you can deploy the firewall in the spoke virtual networks as well. So let's make this spoke a little bit bigger and let's put a firewall in there. I've already got a snapshot of one, so let's copy it and then let's paste it. Let's put this firewall inside this spoke one here. And let's put some more squares in here to replicate subnets. And let's call it web for web subnet. So the web service is living here. And then we may have another one called the app subnet for our application servers. And then another one for our backend databases db now if you wanted to you can enforce access control between the firewall between your subnets so each of these subnets can speak to each other but they have to go through the firewall maybe you have very sensitive data and you need to log absolutely everything in that spoke network let's say this spoke network has really sensitive information in it and you can do this absolutely fine you just need to set up your routing accordingly which is your user defined routes like the static routes in a Cisco world. And it doesn't need to be an Azure firewall, it can be a third party firewall as well, like a Palo Alto firewall, like a Fortinet firewall. So for company security, compliance requirements, etc., you might do this. But generally speaking, usually we don't do this. We use network security groups to enforce access control, either within the subnets or between the subnets, because network security groups does both. You can apply network security groups to the interfaces of virtual machines, or you can apply it to the subnet as a whole. And then between the virtual networks, communication between the virtual networks, by all means, we do use a proper firewall, like an Azure firewall. And another thing to be mindful about, let's remove this spoke over here. Actually, let me duplicate the slide and then let's remove this spoke. 
just so that we've got more room to play with and then let's move this on the left hand side and then we've got a peer v net here to here so we've got these v nets peered and let's say that this v net here was in a different region let's say it was in the us and the v net on the left hand side was in the uk so let's call this uk And this one's US, right? I've got US there. Let's go over it again with red. You should typically deploy regions that are quite close to each other, but that's a different conversation. Now imagine all your workloads in here needed to send traffic from the US region right through the UK region, just so it can go through the firewall, just for the sake of sending everything through the firewall in the UK because that's where your firewall is deployed. And that's why you've got your internet connection and your data center connection there as well. So everything goes through the firewall. So you access the internet and you access the data center through another region, which is in the UK. So basically you're going across regions just to get your traffic across regions. And then it has to go all the way back as well, back to the US. Now, if you don't have any latency issues and you've got a good reason to do this, that can be fine. But typically you want to deploy firewall per region just to keep the latency as low as possible. So you need to deploy a firewall here in this region here, which has its own internet connection and, and connection to the data center. This way you keep the latency as low as possible. As if you know what region is, it's made up of an area that consists of availability zones and availability zones are one or more data centers. And this is all connected up with a very low latency connectivity. So everything is super quick. You can see it as a local area network in a data center. But when you're going from region to region, the connectivity is slower, just like connectivity from one data center to another data center over a one link. So try and keep your traffic as local as possible. And this is a prime example of when you've got an active data center in one region and then you've got a backup data center in another region. So not necessarily hub and spoke topology, just an active and a backup data center in Azure. So it makes sense to have its own firewall, internet connection and data center connection. So it may be another hub and you may have spokes off here as well. And one final thing about design, this is not necessarily related to firewalls, but if you have lots of connectivity requirements to your Azure environment, let's say this is a hub. Let's call it a hub. So this is a hub VNet in the US and this is a hub VNet in the UK and both of them have their own spokes as well coming off them. So you have lots of spokes coming off the UK VNet and then you have lots of spots coming off the hub VNet as well and then you have lots of other connectivity as well just like the UK VNet you have internet access you have data center access you have lots of VPNs to branch offices so you have lots of branch offices throughout the world and let's say you have many of these hub VNets throughout the world in a hub and spoke topology and then all the VNets need to be peered together as well just like this peering here well, for this sort of situation, you would need to look into deploying a virtual one solution instead. It's an Azure networking service, which also uses a hub and spoke architecture and built for this purpose. And it also offers a mesh network topology as well for the regional hubs to connect to each other. And it supports transitive network connectivity amongst the spokes as well. So these spokes here do not need a firewall to connect to each other. The V1 service looks after that. It's all built into the V1 service. So there's lots of networking and security, etc. built into the V1 service. So again, if you've got lots of regional hubs and then you've got lots of branch offices throughout the world that need to VPN in, and you've got to bear in mind the branch offices need to connect to the closest regional hub. So the branch offices in India, for example, need to connect to the regional hubs in India and the branch offices in the UK need to connect to the regional hubs in the UK and same as the US. And then these hubs connect to each other and that's how it's all interconnected. And this is where you would need the virtual one. It's built for that purpose. A few more points on the Azure firewall. Only one Azure firewall is allowed per virtual network, but virtual networks like the Spoke network can utilize that same firewall, even if it's in another virtual network. You need to ensure software firewalls inside your virtual machines and network security groups are not blocking traffic. As you've got to be mindful of the layers of security going on here, you can have security groups, you can have software firewalls, and you can have Azure appliances and NVA appliances and all sorts. So just like the traditional world, you should have layers of security built up and any one of these can cause you issues. 
on the firewall traffic is denied by default and then you add rules to permit traffic although the firewall does outbound http and https inspection inbound protection with firewalls is typically used for non http and https protocols so we would need to use the application gateway that has the built-in web application firewall for detailed inspection of http and https traffic there's other ways as well there is a service called the azure front door and azure's content delivery network service from microsoft that provides waf services as well and by the way you need these http https protection services to inspect public facing web services that you need detailed protection for the firewall on the vnet and the public ip addresses all need to be in the same resource group you can only deploy a single azure firewall instance in each vnet but when you create an azure firewall it creates two instances you cannot see them though it just does it in the background and it could scale up to 20 instances so as your firewall always starts with two instances and then it scales up and down based on the cpu usage and the network throughput and that's that for the design piece let's have a look at the azure firewall itself and what features it comes with